Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we come to your throne of grace once again, asking for a special blessing from on high. That the angels that excel in strength and Holy Spirit teach us the guidance and watch over us and protect us. Those who are joining, Lord, be with them as they join. And those who want to join but couldn't join, Lord, prick their hearts that maybe next time they'll be able to join. Lord, have, per have mercy upon us and grace upon us and make your face to shine upon us so we can have all the glory and praise and give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, Good morning, Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. We will have our um, reading of the fourth commandment that can be found in Reve uh, Revelation, Exodus uh, 28 through 11. And then we'll have a healthy living segment by Sister Michelle. So, Brother Royce, uh, he was down to the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thy nor thy son, nor thy God, nor thy maid servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy parent, nor thy strangers, thy whom thy gifts. For six, nor for thee nine. And six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in it, and rested the seventh day. Well, for the Lord blessed us and added it. Amen. Thank you, brother. Praise God. And now we have a help the living segment by Sister Michelle, if she's able. And then after that, by the God's grace, we have a song by the Holly family. Well, Holy Sabbath, everyone. Sabbath. Glad, glad to see everyone in the number by God's grace. And thank you for your prayers. And a, a special thanks to um, Brother Royce and Sister Mary for what to me was the most beautiful rendition of Day is Dying in the West that I've ever heard. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, we got to get we got to get them to sing. Sister, uh, Thank you, Sister Michelle. I was going to mention that last, but since you mentioned it, I mentioned it now. Sister uh, Holly family, y'all have to, you guys got to do that more often, by God's grace. Right. It was simply beautiful. Oh, thank you. You, so, do as well, you do as well. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So at this time, um, our today's Healthy Living segment is entitled well, actually, it's a continuation from the Sabbath opening study last night was on rest. Today's will be on sleep. Sleep. And I always like to begin for those who may be hearing this for the first time from our YouTube family and those um, and otherwise to remind everyone what what is the healthy living segment? What is this all about? Well, we know from the Bible and spirit of prophecy that the health message is the right arm of the gospel. And there are God's moral laws, which are his 10 commandment law, is his 10 commandment law. And then we also have God's, um, the natural law, which are the physical laws of nature. And these things go hand in hand. So if we, if we violate one or transgress in one, be it moral or natural, we short circuit the whole system. And so, um, and we also have been talking about the um, relationship between sin and sickness. And the fact that, again, um, whether it be a moral law or a physical law or a natural law, excuse me, um, when we transgress in these areas, in any one of these areas, um, that transgression brings on sickness, brings on death. And um, we know that righteousness by faith is what gives us eternal life. So it, it makes sense when we study it out, but sometimes because of how we've the world has conditioned many um, who don't who aren't studied 
aren't lovers of God's word and studiers study studying God's word um, to believe that everyone gets sick and that it's okay to be sick. Well, everyone doesn't have to be sick. Um, and God is calling us to be well. Um, amen. So now we'll move on to the eight laws of health. And we've talked, we know that the fourth law is rest. The fourth law is rest. And rest and sleep go hand in hand. But sleep is, is just a part of rest. Um, it's one of the many things we can do to get rest, but we know there's many other facets of resting. Um, the most important one we all know and love is keeping the Lord's seventh day Sabbath. Now, I had, I had searched and searched for some nuggets in Ellen G. White's writings and our natural remedies encyclopedia and elsewhere about sleep. And I was not really able to find anything that really, I'll say this, what I found was not what I was expecting to find, but I'll share some of these things and then I'll open it up to the group. And this is coming from Manuscript Releases, Volume 7, page 224, paragraph 3. I know from the testimonies given me from time to time for brain workers that sleep is worth far more before than after midnight. Two hours good sleep before 12 o'clock is worth more than four hours after 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to quickly read another excerpt. What was that from, Sister Michelle? Manuscript 127? Manuscript, volume 7, page 224, paragraph 3. Volume 7, page 224. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I will share this from that was shared with me by um, an individual who le heads up the health ministry at her church. At, this is actually at 3 ABN, those of, for those of you who may be aware. I know Sister Gloria Loretta is well aware. Um, but the um, she, she once shared that seven hours of sleep, and we know seven is the number of completion, that that's, that's all that we need. But of course we know that from what, what I just read in Spirit of Prophecy, it matters when you get that, that sleep. So we also, when it comes to obeying God's natural laws, um, the daylight hours are you know meant to be active and moving and working and all, all these things. And then when it, after sunset, we should be winding down with the sun cycle is how God intended. And so, um, but I, I, as a rule, as a general rule, I, I make it a point to get seven hours of sleep. So if I have to be at work at a certain time, or if I know what time I want to be up to do my morning devotion, I back out seven hours from that time, and that's what time I go to bed by God's grace. This concept of turning day into night um, it, it is how Spirit of Prophecy puts it, which I found interesting. And this is coming from the young instruct, the youth instructor, which is a book from Spirit of Prophecy, September 7th, 1893. Paragraph five, how prevalent is the habit of turning day into night and night into day? Many youth sleep soundly in the morning 
when they should be up with the early singing birds and be stirring when all nature is awake. Let youth practice regularity in the hours for going to bed and for rising and they will improve in health, in mind, in spirit, in disposition. Let them purpose in their hearts that they will bring themselves under discipline and practice orderly rules. God is a God of order and it is the duty of the youth to observe strict rules for such practices will work for their advantage. At this time, I will open it up to comments. One, one thing I will say just to put a bow on it as Brother MK likes to say, I know when I was young and now I'm older, I won't claim that I'm old, but Amen. when I was younger, I didn't like the idea of structure and certainly not having a bedtime. And I think that's not uncommon for most young people. Um, in general, human nature, we all want to do, do what we want to do. Um, but God has designed that we should be, have a very strict, we heard it from Spirit of Prophecy, we should have a set bedtime, we should have a set time we eat, a set time we um, get up in the morning and do our morning devotion. All these things work together. When we get out of sync with any of these natural laws, again, getting back to this healthy living, then that's when sickness can sneak in and rear its ugly head. So um, just something to be ever mindful of as we continue on this path and try to be an example and, and, um, of Jesus here, here on earth. So at this time, I'll open it up to any comments. And if there are none, I will turn it back over to Brother MK. There's some, I was just waiting. There's some, go ahead. You hear me? Uh, Amen. Somewhat. Amen. Yes. Uh, it was, oh boy, I'm trying to catch your attention. I almost forgot what I was thinking to say. <laughs> um, probably a couple of things. One of them was like every hour you put in before 11 and 12 counts double. That's why it's so easy to say early to bed, early to rise, because you've gotten in about equivalent of 10 or more hours if you go to bed and some people go to bed at eight, nine o'clock and they're up with the chickens as people may say. And it was another thing I wanted to comment on. Oh, do not eat anything within five hours of going to bed. You know how some people like their little midnight snacks or, you know, eat that will uh, compound the weight. That's it. That's Thank you, sister. Praise God. Thank you. Both of you. Any more comments on, on that uh, healthy living segment? Also, not quick point, and thank you, Sister Gloria Loretta. That's an excellent point. Um, I was just going to add, when we do eat late at night or right before bedtime, our digestive system starts working, and we're actually not getting the recuperative sleep that we need, you know, to to make, to bring us or to take us through and get us into the next um, day. So that's another reason why not to eat late as well, not just for the weight factor, but again, for that rest and recuperative sleep. Amen. But, so uh, thank you, sisters. And for those comments, to continue the train of thought, brothers and sisters, uh, what, what does the Bible have to say, say about staying up late and sleeping and, and, and getting up early? Does the Bible have anything to say on that? Do we, do we know that the, the Bible, does we know or do we know if the Bible counsels us on that, what Michelle read? I'm not familiar with it, so you can expand. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Any? 
It only says a sin. <clears throat> Dig in. It's a sin to stay up late. What else? I can't remember what else. All right. That, that, is, that is so, because like I said, we want to make sure for those who hear this segment from the Spirit of Prophecy, it's biblical base. Uh, let's turn to Psalms 127, verse 2. Psalms 127, verse 2. Make sure I got the right place. Psalms 127, verse 2. And one day we'll, we'll discuss the second part of this uh, of this verse. Matter of fact, we might discuss it now, actually. Uh, Psalms 127, verse 2. Amen? Take your time. Brothers and sisters, anything that you can find in the spirit of prophecy, you can find it Bible-based. You know I, I do have it more. Okay. Because so the, the, the author of the Spirit of Prophecy is the same author of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's why we read last night when we dealt with the two great lights is believe, it, believe ye God, believe in God, and you shall be what? Established. And believe in his prophets, and you shall what? Prosper. That's what we're ready to We're ready to prosper right now. We are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Psalm 127 verse 2 I heard pages still turning now if you take this out of context then you will miss the blessing that God is trying to give us and so here it is is it vain for you to rise up early or sit up late mm -hmm. what is that saying no. is it saying yeah. that I'm not, I'm not going to put words in my What is that saying? It, it, it will do you no good. What does vain mean? Vanity is... <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Roy. No, he's not here at the moment. That's the can, I think. No, that wasn't me. Oh, you said, you said he's was... not here? No, I didn't say anything. That was... Yeah, that was me. Okay, anyone? Uh, so Van vanity is, I know the Bible describes it as grasping for the wind. Useless. Yeah, futile. Producing no results. Yeah. So should we do should should we ever do anything that you should is that should our time be spent use, useless uh, producing no results? No. So when we think of vain, there's nothing good. When we say thinking of vain, we think of nothing good, right? Nothing comes to your mind that's positive, right? Right. So if you look at this as it's written, you would think that God said you shouldn't rise up early, right? If you look at this as it's written, mm -hmm. you would think that God says, you know what, not to rise up early, if you look at that. But then when you look at it in this context, what God is trying to show us, he's trying to show, because it's line upon line, precept upon precept. He said, early, Daniel talked about early in the morning I rise. Psalm mm -hmm. talked about early in the morning when I rise. Spirit of Prophecy talks about, okay, let me get, let me wait for Ken to come back. I lost Ken. Uh -oh. One second, brothers and sisters. And why, why, now, why Ken is coming back in, brother Ken? Let, let me look at that last part and we'll go right back to that uh, sleep. The last part of, uh, well, I guess he won't hear this as well. So we would just give us a few more seconds, brothers and sisters. Then we'll get back in. One, one thing too, while we wait for brother Ken, you know, if you think about the animals, you know, oftentimes 
they say that you can track a storm by the, the way the animals respond when, when there's a terrible natural disaster. If you mm -hmm. see the animals running, uh, that's an indication. In other words, they, the animals follow these natural laws. And so mm -hmm. at, at nighttime, you don't see birds chirping. You don't hear birds chirping. Even the animals are sleeping. They know when to go to bed. And so um, I think that's a lesson for us as well that in the, insofar as it being a natural law, um, if, if the animals are observing these things, how much more should civilized mankind be observing um, these things? Hmm. I can't say it's coming back in. You know, it interests me that when the Bible and the Spirit of God teaches us that when God is ready to bless us the most, the devil trying to come in and divert our attention. Say Amen. that it may cause a baby to cry or may cause a distraction or something happen to get our attention from what the Lord is going to bless us the most. And mm -hmm. speaking of that, uh, I'm thinking, thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember, remember brothers, since we are recording, so if we're not speaking, uh, please put your phone on mute because sometimes we can, we can pick up a lot of background noise. Brother Ken is back by the grace of God. So, Ken, we didn't say anything. We were waiting for you to come back. So, again, so when we look at the word of God, say the bane arise up early and sit up late. So if we think that it's bane is to rise up, rise up early, then therefore, then that goes away with the other scriptures say early would I rise and give God praise on it. Daniel rose early. Psalm talks about early in the morning would I rise. So and the spirit of prophecy talks about rise up early. So what it's trying to show with us, brothers and sisters, is if you go to bed late and get up early, you're not getting your sleep. If you go to bed at 12 o'clock and get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, you, you're not getting sleep. You're not getting your rest. Now, we, we're, we're told that we should go to bed at a certain time. Uh, and it's proven. It's a proven study, scientific proven study. It is scientific proven study. And, you, and listen, we don't need the scientists to validate God's word. God's word stands alone on, on the self. Amen. Because, because people try to disprove God, they end up proving a lot of things God say. Scientifically proven study, medical study, proving that those who go to bed before 12 o'clock, about 10 before 10 o'clock, retain more than those who go to bed later than that. So the word of God say, brain is set up late, rise up early. So therefore we should go to bed at a certain time like Michelle. And I just wanted to give the scriptures to support with the Bible and Spirit. But listen, the Spirit of Prophecy needs no support. The Bible is supports itself. But I like to give scripture to so people know that we're not just trying to bring something together, some strange doctrine. Amen. And and this thing that and, and, and this thing to eat bread of sorrows, I can hit on that or either we can deal with that later. So anyway, um so brothers and sisters, without any further ado, now we'll have a, any questions or comments on getting our proper sleep before we move into our song service by the Holly family. Okay. If not, at this time, we'll have a song service. When I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even when I've done wrong, you never left me alone. You forgave me and you kept the blessings. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It's because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fill our day, 
Sisters, let us pray. Our Lord, which art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the word song. Great is our faithfulness. We thank you for the scriptures. But remember the Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord, for the little segment that share with us that we may rest and sleep in Jesus as we lie down each and every night. Our hearts and mind, our soul, our life is in your hand. So we commit our life in your hand at this moment, arrest our attention that we may understand the word of God, that we may remember that as we rest on the Sabbath from all sin and each and every day, moment by moment from sin, not in sin, and that as we sleep as we should, and as we remember the Sabbath day as we are told and commanded, then and only then we can sing the song, Great is our faithfulness. In the name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, brothers and sisters. Holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. The question we have this morning goes in Revelation 6, verse 17, well, probably verse 16 and 17. Revelation verse 6. 16 and 17. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We there. What? What? Say the number one more time. Revelation six, verse oh. six, seventeen. Revelation six. I think I might have said seven. Revelation six, verse sixteen and seventeen. Okay. Revelation okay. six, verse sixteen and seventeen. That's one of our scriptures, and then we'll read the other scriptures in Revelation fifteen, verse one two, I believe. So are we all there, brothers and sisters. This is our question for today. Question for today, and, and again, we will continue our Bible study on the three angels' message. We will complete the first angel message, uh, message, uh, and we'll kind of recap in a few minutes uh, about some things we talked about last week before going our study. But right now, the question is this: Revelation six, verse sixteen and seventeen, and this is the first part of the scriptures, and then we'll go to Revelation fifteen, verses one and two. To get the complete question. And the kings of the earth, well, I'm sorry, Revelation 6, 15, 16, and 17. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Right. Brother MK. Yes. What chapter are you in? Revelation <laughs> 6, verses 15, 16, and 17. Oh, oh you did. Oh, oh, it started at 15. You told us 16. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Okay. 
Y'all there? Amen. All right. I'm not there. Let's go to Revelation 15, 1 and 2. Revelation 15, 1 and 2. Huh? Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. <laughs> <clears throat> chapter 15 verse 1 Revelation chapter 15 verse 1 let me know you get that but it says amen amen, amen. okay Here's it. Amen. I, I read this I'm asked the question I read it twice now I saw another sign in heaven great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues for in them is filled up the wrath of God I read it again and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels, having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Brothers and sisters, here's the question. In Revelation 6, verses 15, 16, and 17, and Revelation chapter 15, verses 1, is the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of the God the same thing, or is it different? If the same thing, what is it? And if it's different, what is it? It's either one or the other. It's the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of the God. Wrath of God. In Revelation 6, verse 15, 16, and 17. Is the wrath of the Lamb, is that the same wrath in Revelation 15, 1, the wrath of God? Yeah. Revelation 6, 15, 16, and 17. Verse 17, the wrath of the Lamb. Well, Verse uh, 16, wrath of the Lamb. Is that the same wrath of God in Revelation 15, verse 1? Yeah. Who's, who is that? Sister Michelle. You say yes? Yes. Okay. A anyone agree with or disagree with it? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You said somebody said yes. Yeah. Does you, Sister Mary, say yes? Okay. All right. Anyone else? So, Sister Michelle and Sister Mary, since you got a ride along, why do you say yes? <laughs> Um, go ahead, Sister Michelle. Help me out. Well, no, no, you got it, Sister Mary. You got it. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I was just basing it on. Um, we know that Jesus is the Creator of all things, and mm -hmm. so often throughout the Bible, God and Jesus are used interchangeably. So like when we see the wrath of God um, and then we he see here the wrath of the lamb, it's, it's one and the same. And, and then in, in the context in verse six, mm -hmm. it says, if you go on and keep reading in verse 17, it says, for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Well, we know what that's talking about, the time mm -hmm. of trouble. So, and that the time of trouble is when the seven last plagues will fall, which we know the seven last plagues are the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? I can see why. Look, it's saying, you know, at, at, at in 17, it says, who, be, who will be able to stay? Yeah. And then over in, in that's in 6, 17. And in um, 16, 15. 15. 1 and 2. Well, we're um, well, the Bible, the wrath of God. In, in, in uh, 16 and in, 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 uh, 1, it says, 
at the bottom it says, pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. So that will be the plagues, right? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Brother Ken, you have something to say? Yeah, well, I was going to say, you know, I mean, we, you're talking about the end time, so. Some have said that the wrath of God, the wrath of the Lamb, the wrath of God are the same. All right, any final thoughts before we move on? It, it's not the Lamb, God. Lamb is God, Lamb is Son of God as well. Amen. Not the Father. I think they are the same. Say again, Brother Wayne. God the Son. That's the God the Son, yeah. And somebody said some other Brother Wayne who said that? That was me, Rosalyn. Just Rosalyn, what did you say? I said, I think they are the same. You think they're the same? You know what? We, so we need to have Brother Roy be missing more often because you talk, but he's not there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that in tongue in cheek. No, I, I guess he does too much. <laughs> when he's there, you can't talk. All right, brothers and sisters, here it is. They're not the same. They're yeah, not the same. When I when I when I when I show it to you, you're gonna say, oh, "Okay, this." And I know what I know. We looked at one word. Uh, we looked at we looked at we looked at the wrath, and we looked at the sun, and we looked at God's. So, oh, they're the same. Um. So for those who came in, matter of fact, well, we, we just asked uh, Revelation six, verse 15, 16, and seventeen. It says, "The wrath of the Lamb, the day the wrath of the Lamb has come, who shall be able to stand?" Then we looked at Revelation fifteen one and said, "The wrath of God," and we asked the question. Is both of those the same thing or is it different? So, uh, Brother Tony, since you came in, do you want to try to answer that or, or no? No, I'll listen right now. Okay. Happy Sabbath. So, Holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. So we do other the people said they're the same. I Go ahead. I see a finger. Um, is one talking about the seal and the other one's talking about the book? Hey, Brother Wayne, can you read it, please? Uh, Hold on for a minute, brother. Sis. All right, I, I just cut him. I just took him off. Okay, go ahead. Is um Revelation six talking about the seven seals, and then uh, Revelation fifteen is talking about the seven last plagues. So, are you trying to change the answer? Is that what I'm hearing, <laughs> brother? brother <Rupert? laughs> yeah. But you write it with a pen or a pencil. I'm gonna write it with a pencil. Okay, basically. Yeah. So, so Revelation six, verses 15, 16, 17 is not is different from Revelation 15, verse 1. Revelation 15, 1, the wrath of God is the seven last place. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you this question. Which proceeds so which proceeds first? The wrath of God, since you well, since you say they're the same, you may think that they the one event. So if I had to ask it this way, you may have known that which answer was. So the wrath of God precedes the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath of the Lamb is Christ's actual second coming. Mm -hmm. And who should be to stand? The okay. wrath of God, God is like the King and King and Lord Lord. The, the, the seven last plays fall before Christ comes back. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Everybody agree or disagree? Agree. God. Christ comes, Christ comes in, in the midst of seven. Seven plagues fall first, and then he comes. Then everybody would have to decide it, whether they choose God or not. But he comes according to Revelation uh, 16, and he comes at the end in of, the midst at the, of the seventh plague. Up to ah, how you, the seventh play. How you go? At night, not even but the seventh play, the last play. Which, which, which the plagues fall, and the second coming of Christ. Okay. Well, the seventh play. What is the? What does Revelation? No, the ninth. What is Revelation? 
She said it's in succession. Christ and she said in the book of Maranatha in the great country was the time of trouble. Say the time the plays fall before Christ's second coming. She said in, in succession. Christ ends his ministry in the most holy place. Plays begin to fall and Christ comes. So, like I said, they two separate events. The plagues of the wrath of God. That we we know the plagues of the wrath of God. But then the wrath of the Son of Man is his second, his second coming. The, the plagues is not the second coming of Christ. The plague, the, the, the wrath of God is the plagues. That's the, that's the, that's the plagues. Two distinct, two distinct events. And that's the point you're making. Right. Yes. However, right. Yes. However, but anyway, we talk about something so specific and so precise. I, 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 I really... And we're not, we're, we're not talking about when he's, com when he's coming, but we're just discussing that the plagues fall in Christ comes. So the, the, wrath of God, the wrath of God is the seven plagues. We know that. Amen? The wrath of God is the seven plagues? Yeah. Or the seven, what did you just say? The seven plagues. The wrath of God is the seven plagues. Revelation 15.1. Yes, yes. And then we know Christ comes after the seven plagues begin to fall, right? So the wrath of the God, the wrath of the, and that's why I said, who should be able to stand when he comes? Did you say the, the, the Christ comes when the seven plagues begin to fall? Repeat that again. I say Christ comes after the seven plagues fall. Three of the prophets say that, close, she said that Christ, she said Christ stopped ministering into the holy place, closed probation, seven plagues fall. Some place fall in cross probation and Christ comes. And that's, and that's the session. And that's the session. That's all I'm saying. So, with the, the, and I'm, like I said, I'm not saying it's Christ coming uh, 10 days and one hour. I, that I don't know. I'm just saying that there are two distinctive events. But they happen right after each other. That's all I'm saying. That's what the Bible says. Find that Maranatha. And also in, in, in the second coming of Christ, and, and also a great controversy, time of trouble. I have a question, though. Yes, sir. I do. I do understand what you're saying by saying that um, <clears throat> it's the plagues that are set by God, and Jesus is coming. You know, represents something totally distinct. But obviously, I think I'm just trying to think out loud. Jesus is one with God, so even though it, it is the plagues that are that are, that are set by God, um, 
I mean, there's no disagreement between the son and the father, so I guess that would be his play too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All, all of it, yeah, all of it is, is, is the whole, is it, it comes to heaven and host. Yes, is that, we're not making a distinction. We're just saying that, that, that she said that there, were two, there are two distinct events, three distinct events that mm -hmm. take place, one, one, one out of succession of another. Sure. Okay. You know, in the, uh, in the uh, last day events, <laughs> the last day events, the seventh plague and the special resurrection. There is a mighty earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. Revelation 16, 17, and 18. The glory from the throne of God seen flashing through. The mountains shake and further down. Graves are open. This is here also. Hail, great hailstones, everyone about the weight of a town, are doing their work of destruction. Graves are open. This is during the seventh plague. And the resurrection. The graves are open, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All who have died in the, in the face of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb, glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. They, they also which pierced him, Revelation 1 7, those that mocked him. And it says here further, God announces the time of Christ's coming. Mm. Dark and heavy clouds came up and clashed against each other. The atmosphere parted and rolled back. Then we could look up through the open space in Orion, which came the voice of God, early writings, 41. Soon we heard the voice of God. The voice of God is heard repeatedly during the period immediately preceding Christ's return. Mm. The great controversy, 632, 33, 36, 38, 40, and 41. Like many, anyway, I can continue. No, 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 keep reading, brother. We're enjoying this. Keep reading, keep reading. Okay, so like many, soon we heard the voice of God. The voice of God is heard repeatedly during the period immediately preceding Christ's return. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it says here, like many waters which gave us the day and hour of Jesus' coming. The living saints, 144,000 in number, knew and understood the voice, while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. Early writings, page 15. And God spoke the day and the hour of Jesus' coming and delivered the everlasting covenant to his people. Right. So forth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Okay. Praise God. So, brothers and sisters, any questions or comments before we move to a Bible study? Anything that's not clear? I guess the, so we, the, reason, the reason this is important is the prophecy talks about a lot of saints are going during the time of trouble are going to be wondering and questioning whether they, they're going to make it in. That's actually in spirit of prophecy. Did they, you know, did they receive the mark? Um, just because of the weariness, hunger, and delay. So I think it's important to understand that, that the, Jesus will come after the time of trouble. So that and we know. Yeah. And also we know that the plagues um, fall during the time of trouble as the plagues fell during the time of trouble in Egypt. And uh, we know that the plays would not fall, the, the plays would not be universal. And also, we know that the plays would not fall on the what, on the righteous. Amen. Right? But they'll be falling on the wicked that have what, that have rejected what. God's God. word. And, they, and so have, have have rejected God's seven day Sabbath, and have supplant have supplanted with a what child of the papacy. Sunday worship, first day of the week, on the sun God. Amen. Can I get you to amplify that for me for a second? Say again. I was gonna say, can you amplify that for us? So you said that the, the plagues only fall on the unrighteous. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Only on the wicked. Well, there's gonna I got I didn't I'm just gonna give you some follow-up questions then. Um sure. what what one of the plagues of a famine, correct? 
Well, I'm talking, hold on. I'm, are you talking about end time or are you talking about Egypt? Egypt? Which one are you talking about? Oh, okay. Well, um, right. Okay, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Which one are you talking about? Egypt Day? Or because when the 10 last, when the 10 plays fell on Egypt, the first three fell on everyone, but the last seven falls only on the Egyptians. Okay. Who, 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 yeah. yeah, but in our time, like when, you know, remember God said that the bread, our bread and water be short in the time of trouble, amen? Yeah, and then about the end times that it will be, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's time, fall on, that to the extent that the Christians are here, that's going to fall on them too, obviously. Which one? In the end times. If them in the famine? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, we'll be, we'll be, we'll be in the world by the grace of God in the time of trouble, but we'll be not affected by it as the oh. world will be affected. So if you're a Christian living in the time in the end time and the and, and the seven last plagues are coming upon the earth, you're not going to experience those plagues? Not at all. If you do, you'll be lost. Well, let's say there's gonna be a famine upon the land. Yeah, there will. Famine of, of hearing the word of God, not not a famine of hearing the word of God. Okay. Oh, you remember, but again. Not a, not a bread and water, but hearing the word of God. But also, too, we know that uh, uh, we will not be able to buy and sell during that time, right? Right. So that's, 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 that's got to affect the Christians. You can't buy and sell. You oh, no, no. No. Huh? No way. God, you're, listen, when, when you say, it, let me say it this way. It, it will not affect us. Where it, if it affects them, let me, let me, I'm going to say this where it, you don't think. In that time, we'll be agonizing, praying to God. We will not be worried about food and, 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 and clothing. We'll be worried about, is, there, is everything right between my Savior and I? If we worried about where you're going to get your next meal from in the time of trouble, you're in trouble. That's why God wants to practice temperance. He said we need to have a faith that would endure weariness, hunger, and delay. If, if, we're not, if we don't have the faith that will endure hunger, then we would probably, when we run to the mountains, you'd be hard. You remember, do you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Do you remember, do we brothers and sisters, do we remember what happened when the children of Israel went into the wilderness and what did they tell Moses when they got hungry? I don't even know if they was hungry or not. What did they tell Moses? We wanted what? Me. God, did God bring us out here to die? Yeah, that's what they said. They said, at least when we were with Pharaoh, we had food. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's what he said. And that, and you know what? She said, the Bible says that some of us, not the ones that are saved by God's grace, and no, I think it is by the one say that if we had a known what was going to happen upon us, we would have never done what we done. We would never even consider putting our hands to the plow. She said, but the faithful ones will agonize whether their life is hid in Christ. And if we have not Followed temperance and the children of Israel in the wilderness. I'm going to go back to the children of Israel and come back to us in the day of trouble, their time of trouble. So the children of Israel in the wilderness, God, Moses brought them out there. God brought them, led them through by Moses and Aaron. And they said, We want, like Brother Roy said, Amen, Brother Roy, that, hey, when we were when we with the wicked, we had plenty of food. And when you with the wicked, you'll be able to buy and sell and do everything else and eat like a king. And be bad for the killing when Christ comes. But if you were the children of God, your bread and water would be sure. And 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 the, and the, I see your hand. And and and, Mo, and Moses said in Hebrews, we say back when, but it's written in Hebrews. I rather do, dwell in the tents of what of God than be in the door keeping the house of the, of the evil man of the, of the house of Pharaoh. So. Right. Brother, uh, Roy, go ahead and I pick up the thought. Uh, Sister uh, Mary Whoever had a hand up, bring her up. Now, I don't want nothing bit of sweet. <laughs> That's right. I want a sweet going all the way through. <laughs> Be because that water yeah. from America was bitter and sweet. And Moses had to throw a branch, which represents Jesus, the tree Amen. of life, is sweet in the water. Amen. Amen. That's right. natural law. Right. Amen. So, Oh, that's right. Right, sister, the right. things that affect the world will cause them their salvation. Amen. We, we, when, we, when we see these things happen upon us, we Amen. should rejoice. Say, Christ is soon to come. Amen. So, Amen. again, we are in the world. We're not going to have stores or boils and everything, but 
remember, God has always, when, when Elijah was running in from uh, Ahab, uh, 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 Jezebel, Jezebel. It, who brought him? Who brought him food? The raven. Right. Well, I'll defeat you. You make sure you. God eat. will provide you. God yes. will provide us. God will provide yeah. us. Right. That's why so, I want. To so it's not really. So it's not really that, that we won't be experiencing it, but God will be providing for us during the time period of these plagues go on. Right. We won't experience the plagues like they experience. No. True. I mean, but that, that. I mean, in a sense, you are affected. If you can't buy and sell, unless you have the mark of the beast, we'll be affected. But if we're going to the mountainous areas, God will provide us some um, the substance that we need to survive on. Is that what I think that's what I should take away from it? Is that right? All right. Well, let, let, let me go back now. Uh, make sure something's really the, the, the buy and sell happened before the place gone. Mm -hmm. The buy and sell mm -hmm. happened before the place fall. Okay. So we so when we when they passed that national son of law. And start enforcing, and we choose not to worship on the, on, the, on the first day of the week, and we worship on God's seventh day Sabbath. Then we will not be able to buy and sell, and some of us be persecuted, some be martyred, some will run to the mountains. Mm. Some will already, some of us be already in the mountains. Amen. So the main, the main, I, I, the, the, to take away from all this will be this. Mm -hmm. and I think we all can agree on this. We are, no matter what we be hungry or whether we be in the wilderness or wherever we be at, mm -hmm. we need to make sure we in Jesus. Can we all right. agree on that? Amen. We agree. Amen. 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 You know what, Brother Morris? If we, yes, if we think about it, you know, uh, these times have come when people, when, you know, people was enslaved and they was, you know, houses was burned and they had to find shelter somewhere. And then not only that with the Indians, when when uh, they had to go exile, island to a, a, a land where, you know, they didn't even know where they was gonna live. And you know what? Let me share something with you now. This is, I'm saying this in tongue in cheek, but as I think about it, brothers and sisters, I can recall a time when all I had was bread and molasses and water. Amen. You made it. Amen. God provided. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. I, was telling did he? Them, I was talking about that the other day. Mm -hmm. said, Listen, if you didn't catch and kill it abroad, you didn't have it at one time. That's right. You didn't have food stamps. Right. You didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. All we knew is the Lord provide. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then you know, I was, we was uh, reading in, in, in our devotion time of wrong. the different, you know, uh, animals that you could eat. And the ones that you couldn't eat. So he, doesn't tell you they, he specifically gives you yeah. instructions to mm -hmm. his, his statutes. So. And, and, I, and I never remember going to bed without eating something. Me neither. Mm -hmm. Me neither. I, maybe, maybe I had, I just probably don't remember it, but I don't ever remember going. And I know, and trust me, they used to call me fat, so right? Because I used to be short, light skinned, and fat. And, oh. uh, and so, and I, I, love, I used to love eating. So I'm pretty sure I probably thought I was hungry, but I was really full. But my yeah. mom probably telling me that I needed to rest. So mm -hmm. what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we have, we have to understand, we got to trust God. You know mm -hmm. what? When we look at the word of God, we have to look at it in this totality, in this totality. Mm -hmm. Totality. That the whole problem is not so much of sin in the world. It's mm -hmm. a lack of faith in Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. If you even had had faith in what God said, she'd have never been the fruit. Amen. If Adam had faith in what God said, he'd have looked past Eve and saw mm -hmm. God and said, God can replace her. Mm -hmm. Amen. If they had, they had a faith in Noah's day, they could have all of them could have been on the ark. God would never right. been If they had a faith in, in the angels and the two and the three angels' message, and, and when the three angels message came to Sodom and Gomorrah, they would not have been burned. And if, and, and if, 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 if Lot's wife had have been where she should have been mentally wise and, and, and spiritual wise, she'd have had faith that, listen, I've done all I can for my kids. They chose to stay in Solomon Gomorrah. Let them That's go. Right. I'm, I'm Let them go. I, hey, you better do it. Brothers and sisters, if, <laughs> if, if, if the Pharisees and Sadducees had had faith in Jesus, they would have never crucified him. They'd have, they'd, right. Somebody would have, but they, would have, they would, could have chosen to be on the God side. 
Mm -hmm. If Judas had faith in what Jesus was trying to share with him, he'd have never betrayed Jesus. And if we have faith, okay. brothers and sisters, then we'll be keeping the three angels' message and, and claiming the, pro and, and the word of God and the second coming of Christ and, it, and, and the righteous by faith. If the church, if the later sin church have faith, they will repent and say, Lord, we need you to lead us, not we lead ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Brother, mm -hmm. sister, it's because we don't have faith that we are not pleasing God. Now, I'm not saying us here, but that's the that's what it has. Faith, lack of faith leads to sin. Because when you have a lack of faith in Christ, you're going to turn right to sin. You ain't got nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. By default, automatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, brother and sister, we must believe what God says. He said, Doesn't be what she had. We must believe what God says, and we must practice what the Lord says. And that's why we must ask, Lord, increase my faith. Help my unbelief. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Go ahead. Mm. That's right. right. I saw somebody had a hand raised. Yeah, that was me. Um, what I was going to say was, is that you know, if if if, if our ancestors had have have gotten the truth about the Word of God, we wouldn't have went down that road. They wouldn't have went down that road. That was not good. They would be teaching. The word of God, and if they was not um, held back from being able to pick up a book and read it, you know, yeah. if this this word of God was preached just like it's being preached, I mean, taught right now, and just like you gave the question, I mean, ask the question of of, of the virtual. If we, if if you had to ask that, we would we we would be still thinking that this is the same, this is the same, but it's different. See, it's it's important to get the right teaching. It's important. That's the important thing. Do not deny yourself of the truth. Amen. And I think I just thank God for you know teaching me and, and, and my husband, you know, me and him sitting down and study, I, I enjoy it. Man. Praise Man. God. I, I mean, I enjoy everyone on the Zoom because yeah. what you say, you know, I, I hear it. Amen, praise be to God. And you know, sisters and brothers, uh, one last thing as we go into our Bible study. When things happen to us, and things are going to happen to us, you live long enough in this world, things are going to happen. You're going to be disappointed in yourself and in people. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. But if we remember and have the faith how God has led us in the past, past we won't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. We often, often forget how God has delivered from the past, how oh. we didn't have anything and somebody knocked on our door, how we didn't have anything. We went outside and found a wallet with a thousand dollars in it that poured and rain and money was dry. No, no, no idea in the wallet. If we had faith, we were in God that brought us and blessed us and kept us and guided us throughout the day. But we often forget and we forget about the faith that we had exercised at that time when God delivered us, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Right. We, need to, we don't have a job or food or clothing. If you faith, listen, if you're faithful to God mm -hmm. and faithful your tithes and offering, faithful your obedience by the by the power of the Holy Spirit, and it comes to that day when you don't have something, we are serving the wrong God. We may listen. We may not have abundance. We may not have abundance, and we don't. Right. Have, but we have enough to, to to keep us trusting in Jesus. God will never <laughs> forsake His people. Mm -hmm. never, God, you would not see one time. You would not. You would not see one time when God has forsaken His people when they were in obedience to His word. It matter, but you know, God is faithful to us even when we un, when we're not told obedient. Amen. Right. Amen. Myself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Myself. I'm telling you, so if this thing, God is waiting, I see hand. God is waiting to bless us, brothers and sisters. The spirit of prophet in the Bible says that God has a thousand ways to bless us we know not of. So if you can think of a billion ways that God can bless us, then bless you, we got another thousand ways you don't know. God don't need anything to bless us with. God, as a matter of fact, you know what? God can tell you to go outside on your porch right now. If, you, if, if, he, if he can trust you with it and say, you know what? There's a billion dollars that is yours. I gave it to you. 
Now go mm. go give the gospel to the whole world. Mm. God is not constrained by anything, brother and sister. God is not constrained nor restrained by anything. Only thing God want to see is the last verses that's in Revelation 3, I think verses 18, 19, and 20, uh, maybe 19, 20, 21, that talks about those people who struggle with when I stand at the door or not. He's looking for a people that say, Lord, send me, I'll go. That's Amen. Right, right. Just to go ahead, then we're going to start that Bible study. Go ahead, Amen. sister. That, that, that just made me think about his, his grace and his faith. Yeah. His grace so he that he had upon us, his love, the love that he had for us. Yeah. He Amen. want us to, to make it, not make it. He want us to make it. Not only make it, but to live, to live within him. No, you said to keep those, those, who have, those, who have, those who have children. The Bible says that you know what? You'll forget your children before I forget you. Mm. Mm. Amen. That's God love. He said, You think a you think a mother's love for a child is great? You my listen. The love that I have for you, you can't compare, brother. So Jesus said, the love I got for you cannot be compared. The, the, the mercy of God and the grace of God, love of God is unsurpassed. Believe me, I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I experienced. Mm -hmm. I've thought about things and God has given them to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I ask because God says that he would supply all of our needs. All of our needs. We talked about this last night. And he would give us the desires of our heart. As long as our yeah. desires heart is not to fulfill a self a, a self lustful flesh but to help others but so we should always be in the mindset of helping others amen no right. way, helping others by giving them the bread of life which is amen. Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. amen amen i'm here to feed that and then say come follow me as i follow christ go ahead sister michelle no i was just letting everyone know am i the only one hearing some feedback not now, but earlier. It's gone now. Oh, there it goes. All right, brother. So y'all, can everyone put the uh, 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 a device on mute? And uh, if you got something to say, take it off. So we won't get a feedback. I didn't hear it. So because sometimes I don't hear everything. And I know the devil, brother, sisters. We, the, the, the devil try anything to get us distracted, brother, sisters. We need to, when we start hearing stuff, we need to start praying, silent to ourselves. And say, get back, say, get back in the name of Jesus. Amen. So before let us start up. If any more comments on that, let us start our Bible, our Bible study for the day. Amen. Brother sister, let us go to Revelation 14. I want you to listen. It's been Bible study all morning for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. study. Revelation uh, 14 says. Revelation 14, yes. And go to verses uh verse six and seven. We're gonna we're gonna try to finish up the first angel message. And then we're gonna I just keep your hand in Revelation 14. Because we're gonna keep going back there because we're dealing with the three angel message in simplicity. The three angel message in simplicity, brothers and sisters. We can someone share with us briefly what we talked about last week. I know we talked about last Sabbath morning and, and last Sabbath afternoon about the first angel message. Anyone can kind of remember what we discussed briefly? Anyone? Don't forget your phones on mute, your devices on mute. So if you want to talk, you may want to take it off. I heard a knocking saying, a God knocking at that door. The last thing I had in my notes from the part two study was um, Revelation 14, or I believe Revelation 14, verse seven, that we must worship God in spirit and in truth, which was a key takeaway. And it may not be Revelation 14, seven. I also have John 4, 19 through 24. Um, but the, what's key in that verse, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. And how that ties back to the, the first angel's message. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've been called to be lights in the midst of, of a dark world. Um, that's one of the things I love about our logo when I look at on the Zoom feeds and even on, if you go to YouTube, you've got this black backdrop. 
with the church, a gold church outlined in gold, and then the bright world um, with the three angels and the trumpets flying um, around that globe. And, um, but, but we're in a dark, amidst a dark, 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 wicked world. And so they that worship God, and if, we're, if we are to walk in the truth and be able to share the truth, which is the present truth, um, the message, that first angel's message telling people the time that we're living in, then we're going to have to be worshiping God in spirit and in truth, and our, which means our life is the spirit and in truth is what we're, what we're sharing, what we're teaching to those that we, everyone we meet. And um, I love to share this quick story whenever, um, when I first came into the Seventh-day Adventist message, and when I say came into it, I just mean introduced and heard it for the first time. Um, I was actually angry because I, I was in my 30s, my late 30s, and considered myself to be of a of a um, of age, so to speak, and not a soul had ever approached me. A single Seventh Day Adventist had ever approached me, and I was actually angry because I felt like if this message is so real and so true and so um, powerful, why isn't anyone talking about it? Why haven't I, why has no one ever approached me before? And so um, in all the mega churches, I felt like were other denominations. So um, that was my takeaway from, from our, our earlier study, praise God. Amen. So brother, sister, as we see, sister Michelle talk about the truth, which is the word of God, amen. We found that in John 17, 17. You know, matter of fact, you know, it's funny, Pilate like Jesus, what is truth, right? And then that question answered in John 17, 17, a word of truth. So we found out that Jesus, like last night, that's for the last Sabbath, that Jesus is the word, right? So now again, keep your hand in Revelation 14. Let's go to John chapter, as we continue the, the last, the first angel message, let's go to John 5, 39. Five, we're talking about worshiping God, amen? John 5, 39. Last part of the first answer the message. Worship God and give glory to him. For the hour of judgment has come. That worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain of waters. So let us go to John 5.39. John 5.39. Keep your hand in Revelation 14 because we're going to be coming back there throughout our Bible study today. John 5.39. Time is bleeding. John 5 39. Amen. Amen. We all there, brothers and sisters. John 5 39. Take your time. We'll know us. Your bread is the word of God and your word is the Holy Spirit. So you will be filled today by the grace of God. John 5, 30. you know, Jesus talks about it, you know, if, if a child, if a, if, a, if a child is hungry, will you give him a serpent or a stone? No, you give him a fish, right? Not literally, but you know, you give him some eat. Good. John 5, 39 says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have what? Eternal life, and they are those which testify me. So brother and sister, if we are searching the scriptures of God, and how do we know what we should be doing, shouldn't be doing? The Bible is clear. Let's go. Let's go to Exodus 20, 1 through 17. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. Keep your hand in Revelation 14. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And we can get somebody to read that. Exodus 20, 1 through 17. I'll read some of I'll read one through one through ten for you. Where, bro? And then somebody can figure out the rest of it. 
Um, is everybody there? Yeah, Exodus 20, uh, 217, we all there? Amen. Amen. All right, all right. Here, brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that which is in the earth beneath, or that is in the, the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. This is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the, the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maid servant, man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strength that is in thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea, and all that is in them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Anyone else? What are you doing? 17, right? You said the 17, you said? I read it. I finished up. Okay, thank you. All right. Honor thy father and thy mother, for thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor, thy, nor shall thou covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox. No is asked on anything that is thy neighbor's. Um, what you say, 20 or 17? That's, you know, you go 17, 1 through 17. Definitely. That's it. Okay. So, brother, so what did Ken just finish reading? The Ten Commandments. Commandment. Known as what? The law. God's law. Also known as what? Word of God. Also known as what? Oh, you're right. You could. You all correct. But also known as what? What we just finished reading, John chapter five. God's word. Oh. Okay. Well, what was? His, what is his word? So we thirty-nine. It says, "Search the scriptures for them. We thank huh. we have eternal life." So these are the scriptures, right? Amen. Which all everything y'all said was correct. So, is any of these scriptures that you, that that brother Ken just been reading any of these things confusing? No. No. So, oh, so how is it possible, and anything possible, okay, other than God can lie, that it's not possible. So how is it possible that people, and I'm asking in a rhetorical sense, how is it possible that when people say they search the scriptures and come up with another day? <laughs> <laughs> and they say, oh, he's about to follow the word of God. Yeah, okay, this is the word of God, amen? Amen. Because because I can tell you, man, I mean, that's it. You know, I mean, the thing about it is, unless you study it, like, if you just, well, you know, it's the, I grew up a Southern Baptist in North Carolina, so I don't know if it's a Southern Baptist, but I grew I was a Baptist. You go to church and this is what you do. And right. that's, you don't question it. You just, I guess, you know, I, you know I'm reading the um, great controversy, you know, um, Martin Luther and, and, and others, Wycliffe and different people, they began to question what, what you know, what the papacy was saying. And I guess in a sense, you know, when you go to church from when you're young, you just accept this is, how things are, but you don't ever ask yourself, is it consistent with the Bible? Because that's what they teach. And you suppose that everything that's being taught to you is, is consistent with the word of God, but the traditions of man have seeped into everything that, that goes on, that it has been changed. But but Jesus, even Jesus said, you know, said that you teach traditions of, of men, you know, not not what I not, you know, not what I say. And, and, and you know what, brothers and sisters, thank you, Brother Ken. 
you know, let's take the onus off the people. Let's put it where, where it truly lies with the, with the leadership, with the ministers. Mm. I, I don't know if anyone pastor still living who used to go to, I don't know if y'all used to go to Sunday churches or what, and the pastor still living. If you went back and say, Pastor, did you know about the seven day Sabbath? And did you know about the whole time you were teaching us? Did you know about this? Why did you know? Did you do you know? Did you know? Why didn't you share this with us? Because when you look at in Revelation, the last part of Revelation 14, verses uh, 7, say in, the one made heaven and earth, the sea, and the feather of the water. Almost exactly what Ken read in Revelation uh, uh, 20, 8 to 11, the last Amen. part. Exodus 20. Amen. Amen. So it tells us that the people are not being fed. Now, let me bring this. Let me bring this home a little closer. Mm -hmm. It's one thing not to be fed in Babylon, but it's a whole different thing when you're not being fed in the last day church. Mm. That's right. Amen. And listen, mm. listen, listen to this. In the church, of, as a matter of fact, we're going to go, we're going to go, right? as a matter of fact, we're going to go to Revelation 14, the second angel message in a few seconds. There is one concept that the word that in the church of the Babylon the harlots, because you, you know Babylon the mother of harlots, right? Mm -hmm. That's one concept when you go to the Babylonian churches and they don't have bread to give you. And you may not be fed because they don't have bread. And the bread is still outdated, right? Mm -hmm. It's really not bread, it's really air. Mm -hmm. But then when you come over to God's last day church, you have bread abundantly and it's being stale and not being given to the people. Mm. Wow. That's something else. Why are you start, you know, it reminds me of, and I think of the, I want to say the kings, the leopards, and the Syrian army had plenty of food. I see your hands, Sister Scott. Had plenty of food. And the leopard says, if we sit here, we're going to die. And if we go into the camp, we're going to die. And by the way, the children in Judah and Israel were being starved. They were starved because they didn't have food to eat. Mm -hmm. So God impressed the leopards to go into the camp where the Syrian number was. To get the judge to get some food. They said, if we're going to die, we're going to die trying. So as they begin to march towards the to the, uh, they begin to walk towards the camp of the Syrian army, the Syrian army heard a march of legions of angels come. Now I don't want to use the word legions because I don't want you to get that word mixed up with the legion of demons. They they heard a host of army of people marching. There's only three lepers. And they heard a whole margin army coming towards them. And they ran, left their food, their guns, and everything. And when the when the lepers, when the leprosy, when the lepers got to the camp, they had plenty of food. And they were so, you know, the lepers could not have nothing to do with people because in, 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 in leprosy, you have to have sister uh Scott, I'm gonna pause and let you get your thoughts out before in case you forget not pick back up in a few minutes. Go ahead. Holy Sabbath, everyone. Holy Sabbath. Holy Sabbath. Uh, we were in, we were flowing together because we were, we were in Deuteronomy chapter three and four this morning. Uh, you know, today it's like the word of God is a multiple choice. You know, they choose to, and, and Israel did the same thing. The Jews, the Jews added on and the Christians taken, in, taken away from the word of God. Uh, you were mentioned about um, um, last night that the God's statues, his, his, his ordinances, it was given to Mos Moshe, Moses by God. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, it's like, if it's not in the divine order of God, 
where people meet in those four walls, God will stamp an Ichabod spirit on it. And we know what Ichabod means. The glory of God don't dwell there no more. <laughs> so God was very specific. He was in details of how he wanted his holy uh, matrimony covenant with his children. Mm -hmm. So that's all I had to say. Thank you, sister. Appreciate it. Thanks for those words. And so, brothers and sisters, as we see that the lepers marching into the camp and the Syrian number ran away, left their guns and all that food, and they had plenty of food. But if they had not chose to do that, they could have stayed and died. So what I'm saying is, brothers and sisters, here the children of Israel and Judah, they had no food. We should have had plenty of food, but they did not. And during the days of the lepers, you know, they, before the lepers would come near anyone, if you read the Zara Rage, you read the Bible, it says they had to say, unclean, unclean. So, but they went and told the children, but well, they had plenty of food. And they came out and had plenty of food because the Syrian army had left the food because God had made a way. There is a sad commentary, brothers and sisters, like, like I told you the story before. The woman that was in the, in the airport, she had lost her ticket and she and somebody came by and she asked the person, hey, I need some money to buy a ticket. I don't have any. Somebody else came by, I need, you know, please give me some money, I need to get home, my family, my kids. And I don't, they said, I don't have any. And the person said, and the next person came by, say, sir, could you please give me money? I need money. So I don't have any, but I do what I do have, I can give to you. She said, what is that? She said, can we, can we just kneel and pray? Mm. And she said, well, I don't want to pray. He said, but mm. no, God will answer your prayers. I don't want to pray. She said, if you just pray, God will answer all your prayers. And guess what? As soon as she got up and kneeled and prayed, she was sitting on a ticket. Mm. <laughs> mm. Amen. Brothers, we are sitting on our blessings because we refuse to pray and feed the people of God. Mm. Amen. It's abundance of food in God's house. And I'm not talking about physical food. I'm talking about spiritual food. We should not be starving for the word of God. We should not be starving for brother and truth. We should be starving for nothing, brother and sister. You know what? If you're starving, you should be so starving, and you God won't let you starve, that you that every word you get, you'll be given to the people. Every every gospel, every brother and truth, you just be giving, giving, giving. And I, you know what? I was somewhere the other day. I was in, oh, I was in a, a grocery store the other day. And the lady said to me, she said, uh, are you, would you pay for my food? And I had my mask on and I said, of course. And she said, oh, I'm just joking, I'm joking. I said, well, if you know who you was talking to, you probably would have let me pay for it. She said, what do you mean? I said, you know, sister, I said, you know what? As long as we are given, God can always bless us. That's right. But when we have our hand closed, we neither can give nor can we receive. Mm -hmm. Amen. The cashier said, oh, I learned something today. Everybody around. She said, thank you, brother, for bringing that truth to me. I didn't really, and the lady said, thank you. I did not realize how important for us to give and receive. Because mm. when you're giving, your hand is always open to forget to give. God, God can only bless us, brothers and sisters. When we give present truth to the people, the spirit of prophecy says the evangelism, I forgot which page it was. I want to say maybe page, maybe page 212, I think, I'm not, I'm not for sure. She said that in evangelism, in, 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 in ministry, she said, the more we give the present truth to the people, the more and deeper thing God will give us to feed mm -hmm. the people more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can only be filled by giving, brothers and sisters. That's right. Mm -hmm. As we in the Church of Babylon, it's about taking. The Church of Babylon is not about giving. It's mm -hmm. about taking what you have and feeding themselves so they can be rich and increase with good and have need of nothing. I'm not talking about later sin church. Later sin church is not Babylon. I'm not talking about Babylon. That's the way Babylon thinks. They think about getting and getting, not giving, brothers and sisters. They think about being fat, but the worldly things are not with the gospel. We think about, we as a God's church, we think about being fat in Jesus, brother and sister, and flourish in Christ, as Psalms 92 says, that if we will keep the Sabbath, we'll be fat and flourishing. Mm. Holy. 
So as we go to Revelation 17, brothers and sisters, but as a matter of fact, let's go to Revelation 14 first and look at the second angel message as we move on. Any more questions deal with Revelation 14? Because the last part of Revelation 14 and verse 7 is about worshiping the creator who made heaven and earth and sea. And only one commandment that deals with creation of the heaven, earth, and the sea, and that's the fourth commandment. Mm -hmm. So, brothers and sisters, as we go to Revelation 14 and look at verse 8. And the brother said to me the other day, Babylon is still falling, but this is still falling. The fall is not complete yet, but it will be soon. Revelation 14, 8. 14, 8. Amen. She's time to get there. But I said, I want you to, I want you, I want you, I want you to show you something here. And then we're gonna come, we're gonna back up a little bit. Revelation 14, 7. What kind of voice you hear? Loud. Okay. In Revelation 14, 8. Do you hear do you hear any voice at all? Did you do, do you hear a loud voice? No. No. And I'm gonna show you why. In Revelation 14, 9, what kind of voice you hear? Loud. So you hear a loud voice in the first angel message and third angel message, but not the second angel message. I see it. <laughs> and I, I want to go there because I don't want to get off. Of, matter of fact, by God's grace tonight, when we come back, I would talk, I would deal with why that is so. But right now, let's let's talk about let's find out who Babylon is. Amen. Amen. So Revelation 14 says, and 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 and, and there follow another angel saying, Babylon, what? It's falling. It's falling. Oh. A great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine and wrath of the fornicate. Brother and sister, I, I implore you to look at you right now. Look at you and examine your mind, examine your body, physically and mentally and spiritually, mm -hmm. and see if anything in you that represents Babylon, you can take it off. Stop mm. doing that. Amen. Amen. If we got anything on us or in us or around us that represents Babylon, we need to we need to rid ourselves from that. Now, again, I'm not, when I'm saying, I'm talking about having fellowship one with another. I'm not talking about living in this world. Okay, I'm not talking about that because we, we live in a simple world, brother and sister, but we don't live like the world, amen? So amen. Don't, don't, don't get what I'm saying. I'm saying that we are becoming part of anything that Babylon is becoming part of it by doing what they, by assimilating. Right. Then we need to ask God to please help me to remove it, Jesus, amen? Amen. If Babylon is falling in that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine and the wrath of her fornication. She made all nations. Brothers and sisters. Hmm. And that all means all. No. That all right. really means all. But God has a people. Amen. Amen. God has a people in all these nations. Amen. Amen. That is not drinking of the wine of Babylon. That's right. God has a people that's not drinking. And before we go there, let's, let's find out what Babylon is first. Then we've got to find out what Babylon is so we know what, we're not, what we should be doing, amen? Because if you don't know what Babylon is, you may be following Babylon and may not realize it. That's why I said, if we don't know what the church is, then we would not know how to follow Christ. We need to know who's worshiping God and where God is being worshiped. Who's worshiping God and where God is being worshiped. Amen. How do we worship God, brothers and sisters? Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. In other words, and, and that, remember, that spirit was not a capital S. That's, in other words, we must worship God in our life and in truth. Amen. We cannot start, you know, we cannot, we can say anything we want to say. All right. When I say we cannot say, I'm using that as tongue in cheek. We cannot say, oh, you know what? I'm worshiping God in spirit and truth and keep it Sunday. Mm. Mm. Because you're not worshiping God in, in your life, nor, in, nor in, in, in the truth. You worship God as you think you are. And so that, and that don't mean that you'll be lost because God, 
long, God bears long with us, amen? But we speaking about, we speaking with those who know the truth and do it not, brothers. So we, speak, we speaking to those who know that they should be teaching the, the three angel message and know that they should be telling people come out of Sunday worship and know they should, we should be, they should be telling people, yes, sir, the seven day, the seven day of the week is, is a Sabbath. That's what we, that's what I'm talking about, people. I'm talking about the people who know, Babylon knows. Babylon knows it's on the devil's side. But because we have associated with Christ riches, well, how who to see, you know what? The ministers have lied to us. Right. Amen. Because they have made us believe that if you're not rich, Christ, Christ is not with you. That's what they say. The prosperity gospel. Jesus never, Jesus never, listen, I don't even think Jesus ever had money in his pocket. Because every time he had money, he gave it to Judas. <laughs> when the women came, and look, when the women came to minister to Christ, Judas had the bag. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, we got to stop, we got to stop them. People make us believe that Babylon is rich and increasing, giving, and, this, and, that, and Christ must be with her because she got plenty of gold and fine linen. And, and she got everything that the world has and that the church has except one thing. And I'll pause, Sister Scott, go ahead. Yes. Um, the verse, the verses that you just read, verses six and seven, this is an uh, uh, announcement of um, judgment rather than, rather yep. than a, a appeal. Is now remember, good? now remember, judgment is appeal. When judgment, when judge, judge, you know what? And I'm gonna show, show, I'm gonna show you. See, you don't have to say somebody, but but you're saying something. When they said that, uh, you know what? There's a hurricane coming in in such and such place. That's judgment. That means you need that. That means you need. To, I'm appealing you to get out. When, when in other words, when judgment, God judgment by the fall. That means that appeal that you need to come out of Babylon. You need to be in Christ Jesus. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. And, and so, but yes. But you're right. There's a message judgment. But a lot of times, you so know what? Because they had a time to. The people had a time to repent. Yes, they did. And, uh, yes. and turn away and turn to God. And that time, Mister God's reaching His hands. I'll sit. I'll stretch the saying, "Come, come unto me, not me, but Him. Come unto Jesus." Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, as we see Babylon in Revelation 17, that great city. That ministers in the past, and I'm talking about not, I'm not, not, not talking about some they've been ministers because I've never heard this, but I've, I was raised in a Sunday church, Pentecost. So I'm not, <laughs> not speaking on your Baptist churches or your Jehovah Witnesses or whatever. I'm speaking what I was raised, what I was taught, what I heard throughout my years. That that if you did not have plenty, God was not, you're not in favor of God. Matter of fact, that verse he says the same thing about Jesus. You, you, you don't even have no letters by your name. How are you going to tell us anything? Every time I see most people that are educated, it's not for God, believe it or not. Amen. That's right. God, for the world. God, you know, God uses the people whosoever will. God don't care about your education, your money. God don't need right. either one. Amen. So, brother and sister, when we talk about Babylon, brother and sister, we talking about when we talk about what was the first Babylon we dealt with in the Bible, as we recall. Rome. Look further back. Further back, go back, go back, go back. Isaiah, go back way before Babylon. 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 Where's the first Babylon we dealt with? Y'all remember the first Babylon we, we talked about? The Bible speaks of? First Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, I just said. Oh, yeah. I said. By the Chaldees. That's right. Amen. And we and, and so and, the, and God used that nation, that wicked nation, to get what his people in line. Amen. God is allowing Babylon of the day 
so the people can see who the real God is. Right. And he's not orchestrating anything in it. He's not like the devil. Listen, God does nothing partnership with the devil. No. God allows things to happen so his people can see who's God and who's not God. Amen. God could have easily stopped the three Hebrew boys from going in the private front, but he did not. Because as we call Babylon of old, did not want to what? Worship God as a creator in heaven and earth. They said, we have a law and you should abide by the law. And if you don't abide by the law, you should be what? You should be killed. Yeah. And you know what? They would not give you no medicine in your arm so you can go to sleep either. <laughs> no. Be hitting you, stoning you. Heading you, throwing you in the fire. Mm -hmm. So, brothers and sisters, so we see how Babylon of old transitioned, then we see the Babylon transition into what? Rome, right? Pagan yeah. Rome, right? Very cruel. Fox the Book of Martyrs. And then as we see the Babylon from Pagan Rome to what? Paper Rome. From Pagan Rome to Paper Rome. Pagan. And we know that the, the Paper Rome persecuted who? The reformers. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, the paper of Rome, the Babylon, is going to persecute one and the same, same people, I'm just using different names, will, will, will do, persecute who? God's people. Amen. So the call is to come out of Babylon because why is Babylon falling? Because they are okay. worshippers. One at a time. Go ahead, Sister uh, Scott and Sister Michelle. Because of uh, their the city was evil, and they um, and uh, it was a world center for idol worship. Mm -hmm. Go it ahead. was a war empire. Okay, that's true. Well, go ahead, Miss Miss uh, Sister Michelle. And I have basically the same answer. I. Since we know um, the scripture says Babylon is fallen, is fallen because she hath made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. We know wine and some is symbolic of doctrine. So, as Sister Barbara, oh, said, oh, 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 hold on for a minute, not doctrine, false doctrine, right? Praise God, thank you for that. So, as Sister Praise Barbara was saying, um, idol worship is basically false. False doc, false worship, false doctrine, false everything. And you know what? And why is why is Babylon, another reason why Babylon falling? And those answers are correct. Why another reason why Babylon falling? Because Babylon is worshiping a false god, Satan, Lucifer, the fallen angel. That's their god, because the, the devil gate of the Babylon is what? The power, seat, and authority. And that's why, and you know what, brothers, if we see, now let me ask this question. Before we, because we're going to go to Revelation 17, we're going to look at Babylon, but, but let me ask this question. And I'm, I'm, I'm purposely delaying going to Revelation 17 because we're almost ready to come to a close. And I know that we're going to pick this up by God's grace this afternoon at 7 o'clock at 6.55. Let me ask the question. Let me ask you, let me close with this question, brothers and sisters. Let me close with this thought in your mind. And you know what? Don't answer it. But answer when you come back tonight of the Lord's will. We see that we see the Babylon is falling, right? Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. Now I want everybody to look out that window. Everybody, wherever you are, if you got a window, look out of your look out of your window. If you got a window, look out your window. And if you see a house or a car, anybody in it, and I want you to have this answer when you come back tonight. Okay, no, you can, as a matter of fact, let's answer this now. If you see the house, if you know you know people in that house, and you see the house is burning from ground up, and you know people in there now, what are you going to go do? What are you going to do, brothers and sisters? What are you going to do? Anybody? You wanna, what, what's going to happen? What are you going to do? I'm going to try to get them out. Don't try to get them out, Amen. right? Amen. Amen. So why are we not going to try to get the people out of Babylon now? Now Babylon is on fire. Good question. Amen. It's been burned up. Babylon is going to burn up, brothers and sisters. 
we need to give the warning to those who are in Babylon to come out of Babylon. Amen. Uh, and uh, Sister Mary, and then Sister Scott, and then we're gonna come, then we're gonna shut it down, and we're gonna pick back up at seven o'clock this afternoon by God's grace. Go ahead, Sister. I think it's your. Right. I, I think, but the Sister um, Mary, is, my brother. When we, when we was reading in uh, Exodus twenty, and it was talking about the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to that part where it says, honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I, I had to pause right there because many parents don't have the truth. And therefore, they are being taught the wrong way. The truth. Yeah, the children, oh. even the parents. They don't have the truth. So they can't teach you. But praise be to God right now. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing now is the truth. Praise God. And it's teaching to have the faith yeah, in Jesus and the faith of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and it's teaching us to learn and know the truth. Study the word. To show ourselves approved to who? To God. To God. Now, you know, when you was talking about the lady asking you at the store mm -hmm. to pay for my food. Okay, I was coming out of Walmart in Grill. And I saw her trying to pick up something. And then I, I looked, I said, oh, you was trying to pick up this penny? I reached down and picked the penny up. And she said, oh, no. Uh-uh. My mama told me never to pick up a penny on tail. I said, huh? <laughs> and so I just gradually brung her. You know, she walked me out to, to the buggy and I told her, I said, ma'am, I said, you should never think like that because that's just like cursing yourself to, 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 to obtain the truth. And I said, there's nothing wrong with picking up that penny. I don't care if it's on Heads or tail, you can pick that penny up. Because when you think like that there, you're really putting a curse on yourself. And I said, many things that our parents traditionally done wasn't always right. And I said, I told her, I said, we, we must keep our minds on the things of God, which is the word of God. And only trust his word, not man made, not woman, because God's word would never fail. Right. You know, I, uh, just before you say something, you know, I, I pick up pennies on, on the head, on the tail, on the side, anywhere. I'm picking them up. So if they don't want to pick them up, leave them for me. I'll come and get them. I'll get them. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm done. Go ahead. I, I wanted to say, too, is that, you know, I, I saw this lady. I'm at Odell Weeks Park sitting in the, uh, my truck. But I saw this lady that um, uh, was her and a baby. And she had a sign up saying that uh, her and her child doesn't have no food, you know, uh, no drink, no you know, nowhere to stay and and she had this big sign up. And so, you know, I don't know whether she spoke English or not, but I just prayed within because God knows if I had it, I would have given it to her because I am a cheerful giver. Um, Amen. But uh, we have to, you mentioned uh, brother MK about the the fire and all but first of all we have to know how to go uh, and retrieve a person uh, get the person out of the fire so we we send up a prayer to God quickly because this is a um, emergency thing where mm -hmm. the the dim, dim, you know what you said for example so we have to pray to God and ask, a whiz, ask his wisdom and ask him for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of how to rescue this person 
or persons out of the fire so that we ourselves won't get burned up. You know what I mean? Amen. That's right. You know, it's just go ahead. That that was it. You know, Sister Scott, I was talking to someone this morning on the phone, Brother Anderson, and the subject came up about disciples, children of the wilderness in Israel, old time of Moses lead them, and then the children of the wilderness again when Christ was feeding them with two fish and five loaves on one occasion. And the disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, we don't have anything to give them to eat. Send the people back in the town. And Jesus said, give you them to eat. So Sister uh, Scott, I'm saying to you, uh, you may not have silver and gold, you have none, but such you have given to her. But the, go and join yourself and pray for that lady and pray for that lady and ask her, do she want to give her life to Christ? Because I tell people all the time, I say, listen, you can be the giver and not the lender and not the beggar. So if the Lord impress your heart to go pray for her, that's more than seven gold can ever do for her. If the Amen. Lord, the Amen. Lord you to do that. Let, pray to the Lord, ask the Lord for you to do that, not take my word for it. Sister, uh, Brother Rodney, go ahead and close down. But you know what, let me say this right yeah. quickly no. too. No. Hello, Brother Rodney. Let me say this right quickly. Yes, you remember the, you know, I understand what you're saying. If you're led to do that, do that. And uh, I did, I, I did send up a prayer to her and I believe that someone is going to come along and, and meet her need mm -hmm. according to, but like the centurion soldier said, Lord, you don't, you, you don't have to come to my house. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, word, just word. Word, and my servant shall be healed. Mm -hmm. And so I, because I really don't, even the anointing of whether she speak English or not, which I don't think she speak English. Cause as I was ministering to her, uh, I, I, you know, her response, I don't, I, I don't think she speaks English, but mm -hmm. however, I was in my truck and she's standing on the side there, but I'm just believing God that God, yeah, will, you, go. you know, meet yes, her will. needs today for her and her baby. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah. Good, good. Amen. All right, Brother Roy, go ahead. Let me go no, ahead. Gonna, you, you said what I was, I was just going to reemphasize what Peter was saying about, you know, not having no similar go for such as I have. I give unto you. See, that's the most important thing it is. That's what a blessing lies. Yeah. Act of obedience. So that you have just the prayer with sincerity. The Bible says you have an honest prayer, God asks. So when you pray for somebody like that from your, you know, un earnestly from your heart, that's love right there. And you intend, and God will answer that. He'll honor that. So that's why I say a lot of times, it ain't the things that you do, it's what you're praying for, what you, how you believe, who you believe. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, any, any comments or questions or thoughts about what we studied uh, thus far on the first angel's message? And we kind of tipped. We only we only touched the third angel's message, second angel's message. Of course, Sister Scott. And I want to say, too, that um, the uh, Revelation uh, 14, verse 6 and 7, there is not going to be no, not, uh, not in just Revelation, because as you said earlier, that it is the the you know this the great judgment of God, and and um, and the people had time to repent, but they took God's um, you know they they just thought that they had time or they took God's uh, grace for granted, but uh, His final judgment will not be put off forever, and so the you know no one. No one, no one will have the excuse of never, never having heard God's truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's so right. So, so right. Anyone else? Any, thank you. Anybody got any questions or comments? I got one more comment. Uh, Go ahead, you know, I like how you use that as that example of if you see a people person to call a house, it's on fire, would you get them out? That's a good example. It, it, we, whenever tragedy is happening, we don't think about our own personal stuff. Mm -hmm. We immediately, you know, take action. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is, that was something good that mm -hmm. you know you, you gave the example, mm -hmm. you know, oh, and, uh, and mm -hmm. we, we know that somebody's in danger. Mm -hmm. You don't wait. Mm -hmm. Go get them out. That's right. 
Anyone else, brother and sister? I, Any more? I have a comment. Please, please. Uh, I was I was tested on this after the first or the second study. I don't remember now after which one, but on this three angels message in simplicity. And um, I had a friend of mine that actually we were very close, a group of us during co our college days. Um, and so much so that we used to, different times of the year, we would all get together, five of us, and vacation. Um, but anyway, there had, there's been a period as I've ventured off in, in, into this uh, ministry, into the ministry, not, not this ministry, but just the faith of, and um, Seventh-day Adventist faith, there's been a wall that has formed. But um, one of my friends from this group reached out to me shortly after we had this study to, um, she actually called me on the phone and we hadn't spoken in over a year. And um, she wanted to know if I would, she's also a civil engineer as am I. And she wanted to know if I would want to participate in there's a Seventh-day Adventist project that they're going to be building. And I'm not going to give too much detail because I don't want to, who, who knows who will hear this. I, what I want to say is simply this. Um, I was asked to participate in something or if I would like to participate in something and contribute to a project, a, a building project for our profession that was being done by a Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, and I, can, I told her I would pray about it and get back with her. And it was something to do to help out young engineers, aspiring engineers in the future, um, but all under the guise of, the, it was the Seventh-day Adventist church heading it up um, for this future mentorship slash teaching. Well, I inquired of the Lord and um, I, at the time I did, before I went to the Lord in prayer, I didn't really know what the answer I was, the answer I was going to get, you know, sometimes when you go to the Lord in prayer, you already know the answer. You're just waiting for him to confirm. This was, this was a situation. I really did not know what he, how he was going to lead me. And um, what he showed me was, and I, and I knew then that it was a test from what we had learned in this three angels message. Um, what the, what the project was doing was not present truth. Um, it was going to be teaching young children mm. a biblical principle, but it was a it was precious truth. It wasn't present truth, and therefore I declined. I would not participate. But I thank God for that because what it showed me is getting back to this whole urgency. Um, you know the burning house, the burning bush, the burning what, what have you, um, we have to begin to see every decision we make as a fire. And so, you know, the, when th things are presented to us, it's a fire, it's, a bur it's burning, you know? Mm -hmm. and so therefore, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about it um, to quench it? So I, I praise God for that. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, you, you may you may find this kind of strange. When I say this, hear, hear what I'm saying, but not hear what I'm speaking. Some things we don't have to go to God for. We already know the answer. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we go to God for approbation, not for direction. Balaam, when I say approbation, I mean we go to God to prove what we want to do. And sometimes he let us do what we want to do and it caused a detriment or heartache and pain. Balaam went to God for approbation. He didn't go to God for direction. He knew that he shouldn't have went. Uh, now, when we look at this situation that Sister Michelle just gave, building a future. So they plan on staying in this world a lot longer than God anticipated them to stay. 
We should be building schools for the prophet, brothers and sisters. I teach our school to, to the range of the message, brother Jew. We want to build something, build, a, build something for eternity. Let's build something for our children that they can worship God in spirit and in truth and not have an environment where it's not even teach about it's okay to be this way, be that way, you know, because you were born that way. Brothers and sisters, listen, there's a time for everything. And like you say, and, and if we don't know, we should always inquire the Lord. If we don't know, always inquire with a, I see your hand, Sister Scott, always inquire of the Lord with a mind of innocent and not of approbation. In other words, for direction, Lord, I really, if it's in my heart to do this and I don't know it, please take it away because I really want to do what you asked me to do when you tell me to do. Is this where you asked me to go? Is this where you asked me to walk? That's what we need, always be in the mind, Lord. In a, in a mindset that we are asking God for direction and not for approbation. So since God, go ahead. And I know I'm keeping you all long and I anticipate it. You're on so mute, Mr. Bar Barbara. Okay. Okay. You said, oh, I didn't know I was mute. You, you and although you said it, Brother MK, timing is so essential. We may, although we know the word of God, we, you know, but the timing, see, what about the, is the timing in the timing of God? Is it in the season of God? God? David wanted to build the tabernacle. God said, no, 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 no. no. He said, your son, I'm going to get your son Solomon because you got too much blood on your hand. So the timing of God is very, very important because, let's see, I can go and I could, each one of us are assigned to, uh, God has assigned each and every one of us to souls. We're soul winners. So mm -hmm. anyway, I can't, I, you know, I, I can go, go to each one of you and say, let me minister. I'm going to minister to to, to this person. I'm going to minister and witness it. And I said, no, 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 no. No, I have brother so-and-so and, -so and sister so-and-so to do that. But in God's timing mm -hmm. and in and, and his, his uh, season, well, one may plant, one may water, but who gives the increase? God does. God does. So that's what I'm, I was saying. And, and you said it, you was talking about the timing, you yes. know, even when it meant silver and gold, that's not what you need. Pick up your bed, you know, whatever's got you, whatever is keeping you from coming, going forth and, 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 um, and, and seeking after God. And, you know, you need to turn away from that thing, humble yourself, seek God's face, and and then you know what I'm saying. Then you 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 you're you're okay. You're in the will of God now. Yeah, brothers and sisters, thank you, sisters. Brothers, those comments. 